This comment from Vamp9 got quite a few likes recently, and while I was initially going to focus on trades, this video for the A's kind of evolved. See, in my lifetime, the Oakland Athletics have had three competitive eras. The early 2000s Moneyball era, today's team led by Matt, Matt, and Marcus, and a three-year stretch in the middle of that that I'll call the Donaldson era since he was the breakout star of the team. Each of these eras are worthy of a video, but that stretch from 2012 to 2014 is really intriguing to me, so let's talk about it. My name is Bobby, and welcome back to Stat Stories. Out of Here Baseball is a partner of Unhinged Media and Grunt Talks MLB. Links to those websites in the description. Here are the Athletics' win-loss records from 2011 to 2015. A 20-win improvement from 2011 to 2012, three years of success, and then a decrease of 20 wins. Those are some pretty drastic differences in results over a five-year span, and the roster turnover reflects that. The A's had just four players receive 150 plate appearances in both 2011 and 2012. In other words, just four position players from the 2011 team were still around in 2012. And the same goes on the mound as just four pitchers threw at least 30 innings in each season. I know those are pretty low thresholds for playing time, but it only drives home the point further that this team looked drastically different in 2012. Now after they won their division that year, the roster stayed mostly intact. And they won the division again in 2013, so a lot of players returned. The A's would get a wildcard berth in 2014, but for reasons we'll touch on later, Billy Bean blew up the roster. And so, not many players returned for the 2015 season. So now that you see this timeline, let's look at what happened between 2011 and 2012. The Athletics had some quality pitchers on their 2011 roster. Trevor Cahill was 23 years old and had already made an all-star team. Gio Gonzalez was 25 and also a one-time all-star. And 27-year-old closer Andrew Bailey was the 2009 AL Rookie of the Year and a two-time All-Star. These three had a lot of value and were traded in December 2011 for several young prospects, including Ryan Cook, Jared Parker, Tommy Malone, Derek Norris, and Josh Reddick. There were other players involved in these trades, but these are the ones relevant to this video. Expectations were low for the A's in 2012. They had a young team that had little to no Major League experience and were in a tough division. The Rangers had been to the previous two World Series and had just signed Yu Darvish to the starting rotation. The Angels splashed big money on free agents Albert Pujols and CJ Wilson and had a certain someone at the top of the prospect rankings. But to be fair, so did the Rangers, which just goes to show you, you never know who will pan out. Anyway, the A's were seen as a 500 team at best and a 100 loss team at worst. Despite having a bit of an up and down season, by the All-Star break, this team had an even 43 wins and 43 losses. And that brings me to a little story. I was in Boy Scouts and I went to a place called Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico in July of 2012. It was an awesome experience backpacking out there for about two weeks, but I was without internet. So upon my return to civilization, I checked baseball news and recall three things that had happened. One, Ichiro was traded to the Yankees. Two, the Astros had gone 1-15, and, and 3, the Athletics had gone 12-2. and two. And remember, the Astros were still in the National League at this time, so the A's weren't beating up on a struggling division rival. After some more ups and downs, the A's caught fire in late September and found themselves just two games back of the Rangers, with three games remaining. And as fate would have it, the A's and Rangers squared off in Oakland for those last three games. It would take a series sweep for the A's if they wanted to win the division. And, well, I already said earlier that they won, but still, it was an incredible finish to the season. The A's owe a lot of their success to their pitching. The average ERA in the American League that year was 409. Out of the 16 pitchers on the Athletics that threw at least 35 innings, just one had an ERA above that mark. The A's had several rookies among their starting pitchers such as Tommy Malone and Jared Parker, who were acquired in those off-season trades, Travis Blackley, who still qualified as a rookie despite making his MLB debut in 2004. Seriously, go check out his Wikipedia page, I've linked it in the description. AJ Griffin and Dan Straley were both draft picks of the A's, and then Graham Godfrey made four starts early in the season. Altogether, that's 101 games started by rookie pitchers. And due to injuries and a suspension to other starting pitchers, these five 
comprise the starting rotation by season's end. But the A's didn't just have rookies on the mound. Their prize of the offseason was Cuban outfielder Ioannis Cespedes. No one knew what to expect of him, and to a lot of fans, he was just that guy with the training video. But 53 extra base hits, plus speed, and a cannon of an arm proved he was capable of handling Major League Baseball, and he finished runner-up for Rookie of the Year and 10th in the MVP vote. As far as team rankings go, the A's had the second best ERA and whip in the American League, and they drew a lot of walks, but otherwise were pretty average on offense. I'm not going to go in depth on their 2013 season, but the A's won the division again over the Rangers, and once again had great pitching, but had an offense that stood out a bit more. 2014 I'll touch on in just a sec, but the team was still great on the mound, and the offense was even better than the previous season. Walks and home runs were a big part of the offense, and the A's had a few breakout stars who contributed to that, such as Brandon Moss and Derek Norris. But the true breakout star for this team was, of course, Josh Donaldson. The former catcher found his home at third base and became an MVP contender after 2013. He hit for power, got on base, and fielded well, and looked to be the face of the franchise for the next few seasons. But now, we must bring up 2014. The A's and Angels were two of the top teams in baseball. The A's got aggressive with trades in July and acquired Jeff Samarja, Jason Hamill, and John Lester to boost the starting pitching. They mainly gave up prospects to get these guys, but to get Lester, they had to trade all-star Ioannis Cespedes. And the offense really scuffled down the stretch, with the A's going 16-30 after August 9th and losing 14 of those games by just one run. They managed to grab a wildcard spot but would lose to the Kansas City Royals in a very exciting contest. What happened next just didn't make much sense. Billy Bean traded away multiple All-Stars in the offseason while still signing Billy Butler and trading for Ben Zobrist. Now I've heard it was due to their collapse the previous season and that they wanted to restock their prospect pool and that there may have been chemistry issues in the clubhouse. And sure, these players were traded when their value was seemingly at its peak but this team had the pieces to be competitive, and instead would go on to finish last place in the American League in 2015. Brandon Moss wouldn't be named an All-Star again after 2014, but Joey Wendell only played 36 games for the A's. Derek Norris wouldn't reach All-Star heights again either, but the only value in return here was a good half season by Jesse Hahn. As for the Josh Donaldson trade, that may go down as one of the worst in franchise history. Donaldson would win MVP with the Blue Jays the next season, and is still going strong at age 34. He also would have been under the Athletics' control until 2019 had they not traded him. While the return for him wasn't necessarily bad, Barreto is the only one still on the A's roster, and there's still hope he could become a productive big leaguer. The one trade that has worked out is the Samarja trade. Chris Bassett has been an above-average pitcher, Josh Fegley a serviceable catcher, but the big win here is Marcus Simeon, the A's current starting shortstop who finished third for AL MVP in 2019. So for three years, the Oakland Athletics were one of the best teams in the league. Their competitive run started after an offseason of trading away key players, and it abruptly ended in the same fashion. While it was exciting to see a team of unknowns take down some powerhouse teams on the way to a division title, I can't help but wonder what could have been had the roster stayed intact after 2014. And while the A's are competitive now, Matt Chapman and Matt Olson were both drafted before the roster was blown up. Maybe the A's would have made different trades and stayed competitive for the entire decade. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this look at one of the most surprising teams in recent memory. Give it a like, share it to all your friends, and click subscribe to help the channel grow and reach more people. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.